And I invite you to join your hearts and minds with me in prayer once again. Almighty God, before you all hearts are open and all desires are known. And from you no secrets are hid. So cleanse now the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. For we give you thanks for this great day of celebration and for your presence with us always and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. A journalist once asked the great George Bernard Shaw, Mr. Shaw, you have wined and dined with all of the greats of our generation. They all aspire to your friendship, and you know them all so well. If you could be reincarnated and come back as some other famous person of our time, who would it be? Mr. Shaw didn't have to think very long. He responded simply, if I could relive my life in the role of any person I desired to be, I would want to be the man that George Bernard Shaw could have been, but wasn't. Hmm. Very interesting. God has created each one of us to fulfill a special purpose in this life. Did you get what he was saying? Today we are going to deal with perhaps the most difficult question, the most agonizing, momentous decision that any of us will make in our lives. As we celebrate those who are graduating from high school and college and higher learning, and as we welcome the members of this confirmation class into full membership in the life of this congregation, we realize that they are all embarking on a new adventure, a new beginning of a new chapter in their lives. And they are being faced once again with that decision, that decision about how they will live into this new beginning that they are being given. How do we live into that new beginning of life that God has given to us? It's one of the biggest decisions that faces high school graduates and college graduates. And it's one of the decisions that faces anyone who stands before a congregation and makes a public profession of their faith saying the path that I am going to follow in my life is the path of Jesus Christ. I want us to look at the scripture lessons that we have before us today. And the first is the one that Lisa shared with the children today in Matthew's Gospel. It's known as the Great Commission. Jesus commissioning all of us to make disciples of Jesus Christ, calling us to spend our life as a witness to all that Jesus has taught us and all that we have learned. The Great Commission. Each and every one of us has been commissioned by Christ to go and make disciples of others. It begins with our baptism when we are named and claimed as children of God and today our confirmation class will be affirming that commission in their life. They will be affirming that they have received that call and that they will live out their call in their life, following in the footsteps of Jesus, being the body of Christ at work in this world. Our graduates today will receive that commission once again. That's really why graduation exercises are called commencement exercises. Receiving that commission, that commission to go into the world and to be all that God has created you to be. 
And so as we celebrate all of these young people, I want to remind all of us that we have all been called and commissioned. And my prayer for each one of us is that prayer that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus the prayer that Elijah read for us today from Ephesians. Paul said, This is my prayer for you, that you may know God, and that you may have hope, and that you may know the resurrection and ascension power of God at work in your life. In other words, trusting that the presence of Jesus is always with you, always and forever, equipping you and empowering you to do the things that God has called you to do in this world. Knowing that Christ has called us and commissioned us to do the work of Christ to build God's kingdom here, I want to remind all of us of just a few of the teachings of Christ that are essential for living the life of discipleship. And the first of those is to remember the commandments of Christ. To remember the commandments of Christ. Guy Kawasaki was one of the founders of Apple Computer. And he gave the baccalaureate address at Palo Alto High School in 1999. Way back a year you guys don't remember, right? Well, what he said in that address so long ago, I think, is a lesson that we all need to always remember. He said to the graduates, there are 10 rules for success in life. Kawasaki earned that right because he was not only successful as a business person, but he was a successful writer and public speaker. And he gave these rules in reverse order, beginning with number 10 to that countdown to the most important number one. Well, number three on his list was this, play to win and win to play. You kind of expect that from business people, right? Play to win, win to play. But then he said number two on his list was this, obey the absolutes. And here's the point that he made. Playing to win does not mean playing dirty. The older you get, you will find that things change from absolute to relative. When you're very, very young, it's absolutely wrong to lie, to cheat, or to steal. But when you get older, particularly in the workforce, you will find that people change those absolutes. And they judge things by what is relative. They think, well, I made more money, and I have a nicer car, and I just had a few drinks, and I didn't cheat as much on my taxes as other people I know. And Kawasaki said to those graduates, I want you to know that that is dead wrong. There are absolutes. He said, persevere and obey the absolutes. If you never lie, if you never cheat, if you never steal, you'll never have to remember who you lied to, how you cheated, or what you stole. Remember the absolutes. There are absolutely absolute rights and absolute wrongs in this world. And for Christians, those absolutes include things like the Ten Commandments that we have talked about in confirmation class and that our graduates have learned throughout their years here in Sunday school and youth group. And the two great commandments of Christ you remember those two great commandments? Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. During your growing up years, you have already witnessed 
many difficulties in our world, in our nation, and within churches around the world. But I want you to remember those absolutes. Learn those commandments and obey those commandments. God did not give us those commandments to be a spoil sport. God was saying, if you want to live a life that is full of joy and peace and hope and that will amount to something, these insights, following these commandments, will give you full advantage of the marvelous life that God has given to us. And the second thing I want to remind us of is that we need to always remember what gives real value in this world, where real value is held in this world. Life itself, you know, is the greatest classroom that there is. On this confirmation retreat that we just had this weekend, we got to experience real life together. Eating together, being able to bunk down together in a cabin, walking in the woods and sharing the life, lo the low ropes course together, learning to trust one another and to feel God's presence in our midst. Well, years ago, there was a story that I read that reminded me that the real value in life are things that we shared this weekend on our confirmation retreat. Things like respect for one another. Things like being honest with one another. Things like remembering to have a sense of integrity about yourself. And if we learn the difference between right and wrong when a choice must be made, then we'll have the integrity to choose right every time. There was a test in this story that was given many years ago by university students. They were doing some research. And they went into classrooms, and they drew three lines on a chalkboard of different lengths. They took one student out of the classroom and placed that student in the hallway, and then they told everyone else in the classroom, the teacher in a few minutes is going to bring that one student back into the classroom, and the teacher is going to ask all of you to raise your hand when the teacher points to the longest line on the chalkboard. But I want all of you here in the classroom right now to raise your hand when the teacher points to the second longest line on the chalkboard, not the longest line. And then we're going to bring that other student in and not tell them what I just told you. We'll see. Will that one student raise their hand when the teacher points to the longest line like we asked them to? Or will they wait and raise their hand to the second longest line like all of you do? Well... 75% of the time, that one student who was brought back in started to raise their hand when the teacher pointed to the longest line, looked around nervously and noticed nobody else was raising theirs and pulled their hand right back down. Oh, I must be wrong. And then they raised their hand confidently when everybody else raised theirs to the second longest line. It's so easy to follow along with the crowd, my friends. And we see it happening so much. Christ calls us to follow his teachings. To live the way of life that he lived. And he promises us as he ascended into heaven that he would be with us always and forever to give us the power, the courage, and the faith to live that way of life. To live a way of life where we follow the commandments and where we live the real values of life in this world. So that where there is a problem in this world where we see that God's help is needed to resolve that problem, we can have the courage and the faith to stand up knowing that Christ will give us what we need to follow in that way of life. Where there is a wrong, with God's help, we can find the strength and the courage to right it. And where there are hungry people, 
with God's help, we can find the strength and the courage to feed them. My dear friends, we are all commissioned by Christ. Commissioned to live that way of life, knowing that the presence of Christ, the risen Christ, is with us always and everywhere to equip us for his good works. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, may we have the power to so live. Amen.